thank you um, for the introduction and thank you for being here. Um, like, like I said, or like Judith said, um, I became a vegan for animal reasons, basically. And I guess you're all here because you care about animals and it's not loud enough. Okay. Okay, just give me a sign if it's not clear enough, okay. So I guess you're all caring about animals and that's why you're here, to learn more about them um, and to be their advocates towards meat eaters, towards the general public. When I became a vegan, it was for animal reasons and I soon realized that I didn't know a lot about farmed animals. I, I saw cows in the distance in a pasture and I met some chickens, but besides that I never had real contact with them. So I decided about nine years ago to go to farm sanctuary in the US. It's um, one of the biggest sanctuaries for farmed animals. And actually I learned a lot about their behavior. I, I saw them really as individuals and I hope to share some of their stories here and also tell you how they are treated in factory farms in, in Europe. So, but first of all, why should we talk about animals? Um, I, I think we have to realize that people care about animals, even if you see in your own families and with your friends that they eat meat and they don't want to hear about your stories, they do care. And maybe they just care about dogs and cats and they don't think uh, about cows and chickens, but I think it's a good starting point to get them more open for other animals. So they, they do care, don't forget that, and, and talk about animals to them. And because people often, they don't know how they are raised, um, in what conditions uh, they are living. Um, sometimes even I hear people who are really disturbed by, by hearing that cows have to have calves every year to get milk. Um, so people, they don't have a lot of knowledge about it. So we are there to get the knowledge out there. And animals really need us because they, don't, can, they cannot speak for themselves. So we have to be good ambassadors. So why uh, farmed animals? Um, because we have a lot of animals um, uh, in confinement. We have companion animals, we have laboratory animals. But I just want to show you some numbers. Um, so here we have the fur animals killed every year. Then we have animals in laboratories for animal testing. Then if we see the land animals, the, the animals raised for food, we have this, so it's a, large, a, a much larger number. And then if we have the sea creatures like fish and shellfish, we have this. So it doesn't mean that causes uh, like fur animals and laboratory animals aren't good causes to invest in. But I just want to show you that in terms of numbers, it's making sense to, to don't forget about the farmed animals. So what about the numbers in Europe? Uh, here we see some yeah, animals and the numbers uh, of animals raised in Europe for meat and for um, milk and, and egg, eggs. Um, in this presentation, I will mainly focus on pigs and cows and chickens, not because the other animals aren't important, because it's just because they're the animals uh, mostly used in, in, in food and, um, and eggs. So first of all, we will start with the chickens. And I have a, l a little question for you. Do you know how many different faces and chickens can recognize what is your guess? Yeah? You mean, uh, human well, it's faces in general, but chickens, if, if you have chickens in an environment with other animals and humans, they will definitely recognize different faces even if it's uh, in other species. So it's in general. So who thinks uh, 20 faces, 20 different faces? Nobody? 50? Yeah, some more people. 100? Yeah, and that's right. They can recognize up to 100, I said, chicken, chicken faces, but it could be other animals as well. So they are actually very smart, intelligent animals. 
Um, they have to recognize so many faces because they are social animals, so they have to know who are their friends and who they have to yeah, keep a distance with. And that's just one example of how smart they are and what their cap capabilities are. Um, this is an image you will never see in factory farms, of course. And still, it's something that is in people's minds. They think, OK, chickens, they have little chicks, and then they care for them, and then they go outside in a pasture. But it's something, yeah, it's, it's one of these examples where you can see that people, they just don't know about reality. Chickens will lay today about 320 eggs a year. So that's almost one egg a day. And if you know that their ancestors would lay about 10 eggs a year, you see how they have been selected um, over the years and, and also how their bodies are forced to lay more and more eggs. The chicks will never see their moms. They are being uh, born in a hatchery. And on day one, like just after hatching, male chicks and female chicks are separated from each other. And I, I think you know what's happening to the males. They go into large bags where they are suffocated or they end up in a grinder. And they're used for food for their sisters or for other animals um, in the industry. The females, they have an even worse future. They end up, um, first they, they got debeaked, and, and even in organic farming, it's still uh, done today. Even if it's not a standard practice, but a lot of organic farmers do debeak their, their uh, chickens. And then after a certain period, like chicks start laying, uh, chicks, chickens start laying eggs at about four months, then they end up in one of yeah, a farm, and we have different systems in Europe. Here you can see um, a, a battery cage. Um, so this is uh, banned since 2012. Um, in Europe, it's still, yeah, it's in, in the US, it's still the, the, the standard uh, type of egg uh, farming. Um, so you know that they were in barren cages just on um, yeah, they were at five or six together in a very small space. Sometimes they get stuck into the wire and they starve because they cannot reach food and water. They are packed on by the others because they get so frustrated. They, they start uh, showing very unnatural behavior. Um, so this is banned, fortunately. And, but I'm not sure that the um, other systems are much better. Here you can see a picture of uh, the enriched cage or the furnished cage. It's a bit of a joke to call it a furnished cage. Uh, as you can see, there is like a very, very small area where they can take a dust bath. Um, there is There are some perches, but if all the chickens that, uh, that are in there would decide on the same moment to go into the perch, it's, it's just not possible. There is a separate area for the nest and then there is a drinking system. But all of this is in the same kind of cages we had before in the battery cages. There's just a little bit more space and, and some enrichment. So that's the, the, yeah, the new kind of uh, cage the system. Then we have uh, free range. You could never tell. If I uh, show this picture to people who are not really activists or who are not vegetarians, they even think that this is a battery cage because they see all these chickens together and they think, oh yeah, that, that's the battery cage. No, it's a free range system. It's, uh, they live in the barn. Um, you see separate floors, so they have to go up to go to the nesting area. There are drinking places uh, and, and feed, uh, yeah, feeding places. But most of these chickens, they will never find the way out uh, to the open space if there is any open space because you have farms who are really close and you have just a barn and then others have an outdoor space. But once again, um, if all these chickens would decide on the same moment to go out, they would never get there. Um, another problem with this system uh, is that the, the chickens used here are actually um, yeah, made in a way to um, do as good as possible in a battery cage. They were never selected um, for this kind of system. So a lot of chickens, when they are um, 
at 13 months they go to the slaughterhouse. By the time they get there, they have a lot of broken bones because they're not used to fly away from these upper uh, layers and then they break their breast bones, they break their, um, their, their, their feet and, and of course, yeah, in a system like this where you have 100,000 chickens, the farmer cannot uh, check them every night to see if there's someone being hurt and uh, needing medical attention. So this is the, the outdoor space. Um, it seems better, but if you know that chickens are prey animals, so they, they love to be in an area where they have protection by uh, trees and by bushes, and because in an open space they will always be like nervous because of predators coming to get them. So this is not a really a comfortable place for them, even if they can, yeah, wander around a little bit and they have more place. It's, it's not the best thing for a chicken um, in terms of their natural behavior. Unfortunately, a lot of chickens, so they can live up to 10 years in normal conditions. In factory farms, they live up to 13 months and then they go to the slaughterhouse because their egg laying period is going yeah, less and less. And so the farmer, he wants as many eggs as possible. So at 13 months, we go to the slaughterhouse, but even 20% of the chickens who live in there, they don't make it uh, until that moment. There is about 20% uh, of mortality, and basically because they don't find the food, uh, the water, uh, because they have been injured uh, so badly, um, so they, they just uh, die. Um, some chickens got very lucky, like this one. I saved this one from a battery cage who closed down. And I, I took this picture because I was like, I knew that it was bad, but seeing this chicken, I said, oh my God, they are so skinny. They don't have any feathers left. They are anemic. They have all kinds of trouble. She couldn't even walk uh, properly. Um, but then if you see how, how fast they, regain strength and how they enjoy the outside. Um, it's definitely worth um, saving them and also telling their stories to other people. Like she was adopted by my mom who is a vegetarian, but a lot of her friend, friends aren't vegetarian. And then she showed the chicken and she said, look uh, how, how, she's, how she's now. And, and she was like this when she arrived here. And a lot of people, got like open to this mes message and start thinking about it. So I think it's a very strong message if you can show a picture, if you can tell about a certain animal, people are open to that and they, they want to listen. So another kind of chickens or chickens used for meat, so they are different from egg lying chickens because they have to be yeah, as heavy as possible in a shorter period of time. So here you see what um, genetic um, selection did in 50 years. Um, so this chicken here um, is ready for slaughter. And if you see how big they are now, so they reach a weight of about four kilograms in, in only 50 days, it has some impact on their bodies. And I visited some a, a chicken farm and they were just ready for slaughter. and. I was really traumatized by seeing how many suffering animals and dead animals were in that barn. The, the farmer, he didn't even like pick them up. They were just laying there. Um, they have organs who are underdeveloped because their breast muscles are so heavy. So they have heart disease, they have respiratory problems. Um, some of them are lame and crippled and they cannot reach the water and, and food. So they just starve there. And yeah, a lot of them have breast ulcers because they live all the time on their own waste. So the barns are not cleaned uh, in the 50 days they are there. So they have like all kinds of problems. And some of them unfortunately don't make it even. So it's about 15 to 20% of mortality. So for all the chickens who are raised, 15 to 20% even don't make it to the slaughterhouse. And then when catchers come, it's a job that has to be done in no time. So they just grab them, they throw them into the cases. So again, they break a lot of bones and, and, and they have a lot of yeah um, suffering during this process before being put into the truck. 
So, and then the farmer, he just explained me, yeah, when they arrive in the slaughterhouse, the chickens who were in the middle of the truck, a lot of them die because of overheating. They just cannot breathe and they just die there. And it's something economically, it's not that bad because they just calculated in, into the price. So they just take the losses. And I think I, I put this picture in here because if you see this chicken has still blue eyes, it's a baby chick. They were peeping like chicks. And so actually pe people, they don't realize that they are eating babies, not full grown chickens. They just live 50 days and that's it. So the one you saw in the pictures uh, was saved. I, when I visit the factory farm, it helps me. I know that it's, there are so many chickens who need help, but I always take one or two, and it's just for me to help me deal with it. And, and so we took two chickens. Um, one died the same night, but the other one was saved, and she's having a very happy life with other chickens. And again, it's amazing to see how how strong they are if you just give them some time and some good food and some treatment, everything is going well. And the farmer, he just was, he was laughing at me and saying, oh, they will die. It's not making any sense to try to save them, they will die. These chickens were saved, they, they, this is a picture from a farm sanctuary. So another thing about factory farmed animals is Sometimes you hear people saying, oh yeah, but farmers, they, they care about their animals, they love them because it's, yeah, it's their living. But these chickens were uh, saved after Hurricane Katrina hit uh, a certain area in the US. And a lot of farmers lost their barns and a lot of chickens died and some were surviving. But like the easiest thing for the farmers to do was just dig a, a hole with a bulldozer putting in the live chickens and just cover it up. And for their insurance, it was much easier to, to get the money than to save the chickens who were still alive. So Farm Sanctuary rushed over there and saved some chickens, not all of them. But these guys were like the lucky ones. And they were actually five years old when I met them, which is very old for a broiler chicken. They needed a lot of medical attention. Most of them got uh, pain medication because they had arthritis or other problems. You can also see that they have foot bandages um, because of the high weight, their feet are yeah, a bit weak uh, to carry all this. So we had to, um, to give them foot bandages every day. And these roosters were very interested in what we were doing. And they, there were even some chickens who enjoyed it that much that they fell asleep on our uh, lap. So it was a nice, nice uh, thing to do. OK, other animals, pigs. Um, I would say, guess the differences, but I think there are so many differences between these pigs that yeah, we, would, uh, we wouldn't have time to go over all of it. But the basic thing about modern pigs who are used in, in factory farms is that they are, again, raised to have as much meat as possible in the shortest time. And it's the pig who is suffering uh, because of that. Um, Another thing, a question for you, is how many piglets, piglets does a pig, a sow, get? Do you have any guesses? 16. Yeah, right, 16. And the industry is even trying to get to 18 piglets. And if you know that this, uh, just a, um, a wild pig would have six piglets a year, it's enormous. So their bodies are, yeah have changed a lot in the last years and farmers they just go for profits. Um, what you can see in pig farms is that they take away the um, surplus piglets, like if, if a, a saw can have a 14, for example, because she has 14 nipples, they take away two piglets, they put them in a box. You cannot see it very clear on this picture, but it's some kind of a filthy box. They got bottle fat or they have yeah, other feet. And it's full of flies. Uh, they don't have any uh, contact with their mothers. Um, so it's, it's, it's ugly. And, and then farmers are like proud to say that they are getting to 18. And 
In the, in the other case, you see smaller piglets because during pregnancy, not all of these piglets can have enough um, uh, nutrition, so they are born smaller. Um, pigs are very um, dominant, and so the stronger pigs get the best uh, food, and the little ones, they just, yeah, they starve to death, actually. This is how sows are kept these days, because since 2013, a lot changed in Europe. Um, so before, sows were kept in this kind of boxes all of their lives, the farrowing crates. So they just could do one step and, and that's it. And they were looking at a concrete uh, wall. They were hole on a concrete floor and they didn't have any contact with other pigs. So this is really for a, a very social animal as pigs, it's like making them insane. And so now we have this system. For me, there's not a lot of difference. Um, the only difference is that they are not kept in there for the, the whole of their lives. That's the three weeks before giving birth and then three weeks after the, the piglets are born uh, that they're in there. But as you know, they have like two nests a year, so they're there for a lot of, of the time. And then the, um, the time in between, they are in, in, in a larger barn. Um, they have some straw, so it's a little bit better. Um, and they have contact with other pigs, uh, which is very important. Um, I think if you would take away one thing from pigs, if they w would be able to choose, I think they would rather choose to have a companion than a nice barn with straw and nice food. Uh, so social bonds and contact is, is very important. Also here, um, a lot of physical problems occur because they have been bred to get like six months. They are slaughtered at six months. and they don't need to um, grow older. So whenever you grow, when you save a pig and you want to give it a, a healthy life, um, it's very hard to get them like all medical attention because they have, they suffer arthritis. Um, their bones are not made for to carry this kind of weight. Um, they also have a lot of reproductive problems in the industry and this is one of the main causes why breeding saws are discarded like after two or three years. They can live for 10 years. Um, but the, the, most, um, the most horrible thing for pigs is the boredom. Um, they should have toys in there, but I've never seen any toys. Sometimes they have a metal chain, but I, I don't consider it as a toy. Um, so boredom and also the chronic anxiety is one of the worst things for pigs uh, in the industry. So this is how the, um, yeah, the pigs are kept during these six months. Um, they have high-tech um, instruments to measure how much they feed a day, how much weight they gain, uh, but they're st still in a very barren environment um, without any, yeah, anything that can trigger them, anything that can yeah, ha cause their national behaviors. Um, they're also, and that's very sad too, pigs are very hygienic animals um, and they are forced to live in their own excrement. So you can see this is not mud because they don't go outside. Um, so and you, you can see also the anxiety in their eyes. Um, at the moment of slaughter, so in Europe we have different system of slaughter. It can be electrical, um, stunning, or there can be gas chambers with uh, CO2 um, gas. Um, and this is like a very small family slaughterhouse where you can have, this, where, where the stunning is done pig by pig. So here they are stunned pretty yeah, well. But in the larger slaughterhouses, a lot of pigs just are not stunned well enough or they just can escape. Um, in some way, the electrical uh, prod, and then they, they, yeah, they're often uh, killed, uh, fully conscious, conscious. So now the nice part of, about pigs, you can see the differences in their faces. I guess this is a saved pig um, in farm sanctuary. 
and they were so friendly. When my first con contact with pigs was like, oh my god, they are like dogs. They run up to me. They were just a little bit bigger than dogs, but they they wanted to play. They were checking my bag. They were. Uh, looking for uh, a, a, a game, uh, we played a lot with them in the pastures, and it was so nice to see and to realize that there is nothing different than with our companion animals. It was very eye-opening to me. So I spent a lot of time in the barn because they liked it as much as, as I did, so we cuddled a lot, and I, uh, I gave a lot of belly rubs, and and all this kind, and also see how big they are. Like when we see pigs, uh, they are about this size. They're only six months old. These pigs were about 10 years old, and so they were fully grown, and they were enormous. Here, another one uh, taking a nap. Pigs love to, they love to investigate the surrounding areas, but they love to take naps, and they prefer doing it with friends all together in the straw. You can see it here. The, um, one of these pigs is the mom. Uh, she was called Nikki, one of my favorites. And she was actually uh, rescued from another natural disaster. There were some floods and yeah, people, the farmers just left their barns and their farms and some of them opened the cages, others just left it like that. So a lot of pigs drowned, others were wandering around and they were shot because they would yeah they were afraid that they would be aggressive and so Nikki she had she was able to save five piglets and she was saved by farm sanctuary guarding her piglets um, on the side of, of a road and so they were fully grown here but they still knew that it was their mom and every night she made a nest for them and so they uh, they slept all together in there. Um, also, funny thing, if one of these pigs had to go to the bathroom during the night, they just go up, they go outside, far from their sleeping nests, and then they come back and sleep uh, with the rest of them. So they're very hygienic. You never find any waste in their nests. So here is their pasture. They had a, a nice little pond with mud, and, and yeah, it was great to see pigs that way. Okay, now the cows. We have milking cows, we have cows used for meat. Um, do you know, or do you have a guess, how many times more milk a cow produces than she would need for a calf? Who thinks two? 10 times? 20 times? Yeah, I hear different. Yeah, it, it's actually 10 times. I thought I, I will not, not uh, put all the, always the highest number, so, uh, so it's 10 times, but it's still, it's still a lot. And none of this milk is going to the calf. It's all taken for human consumption. So um, in the 1960s, a cow produced about 3,000 liters of milk a year. Um, now we are at 8,000, even 9,000, and it's still going up. And it has a lot of consequences for these, a for these animals, because they are like top supporters, like producing, producing, without any pause. Um, so producing all this milk uh, makes them very weak, actually. They have a lot of um, calcium deficiencies, so their bones are not strong. They have um, other problems, they have um, reproductive problems. So a milking cow is spent after, f spent, they say, after five years. So they're going to slaughterhouse after five years and they could live like easily 15 to 20 years. Um, most of the cows are still having an outdoor uh, life um, some time of the year. But especially in the Netherlands and in other countries as well, you see them more and more indoors all the time. Um, so it's also for their welfare like a big problem because they have more hoof problems and more other problems in not going outside and, and living on the, on the concrete floors all the time. Here you see a milking cycle. So when a cow, so, so they get, um, one calf a year, 
Um, when the cow um, has her calf, um, the farmers start milking her right away because then she's giving the most, most milk. Then after about three months, she's getting inseminated again. Then she's being milked uh, all along. And then only two months before giving birth again, she has a little pause and they stop milking. And so if you see it like this, it's going all the time, over and over again. They are being milked, like even if they're pregnant. So we are drinking, well, we are not, but people are drinking milk from pregnant animals. And I think this, is, this could be also an eye-opener for people if you tell it, because you have hormones, natural hormones in it. And I don't think that's very healthy to, to consume. This is a picture of cows who are like they had, they could look to the outside pastures, but they never went on it. Um, and for the farmer, his thing was, yeah, it's much easier because I can milk them more and then I don't have to collect them somewhere far in the pasture. They also um, keep more energy when they stay indoors, so the energy can go into the milking. So a lot of arguments, um, economically arguments, um, for the farmer, but yeah, not not for the cows. So that's how they're living. This is the milking machine, so it's not the farmer anymore who is milking them um, with the hand, but it's a milking robot now. Um, they also can register when a cow is giving less milk, so that would be the time to yeah, send her to slaughter. So it's a, a highly efficient system uh, in favor for yeah, getting as much profit as possible. So, and these guys, unfortunately, are also suffering because of uh, the milking industry. Um, it's a byproduct. We don't need calves. Um, they're just there because the milk production would be um, as big as possible. So, right away after giving birth, the, the calf is taken away, like after one hour or maximum one day. And the bond between a cow and a calf is very strong. Um, we, yeah, you can you can hear or read stories about cows who are like calling for their calves for several days, even several weeks. Um, if you know that a calf would stay with the mom like for his entire life, like female calves, um, it's very traumatizing for the animals to to get separated over and over again because a the cow they know that they will lose their baby again and again. So the calves are brought to places where they are fattened for veal. Um, in Europe, um, they can be kept like this for eight weeks, and after that, uh, they have to be in, in smaller groups. So they, they, yeah, in Europe, they have to um, have social interaction with each other. And so the cows are ending up here, the female cows. They're getting inseminated, so there's nothing natural about milk, um, I think. Um. Then another type of cows, like I'm from Belgium, and this is the national pride of Belgian farmers. It's a, a kind of, um, yeah, meat cows. It's, um, I don't know the name in English, I, but it's actually, it's, it's, it has been selected on a genetic deficiency, so they have a, a gene that is causing excessive muscles, uh, muscle growth, and they are raised that way to, to have as much muscles as possible. In a lot of countries, countries it's banned because of all kinds of welfare problems, so they cannot uh, give birth in a natural way. Um, they cannot even, yeah, they have to be inseminated because if a bull will, would mount a cow, she would probably break her back because of the weight. So it's a lot of, a lot of problems with, uh, with these animals. They live very short, about, yeah, one year, one year and a half. Uh, if you let them live longer, they just suffer just from their own body, so you have to take into account that if you want to have them live a long life, that you give a lot of pain medication and a lot of medical care. So cows are very strong, social, family uh, bond animals. So they, they love each other, they love the herd, they have all their, their positions into the herd. And if there is a calf born, all 
females will look after this calf, so it's not just a mom. Um, they're having a very, very good hearing as well. There are stories from cows who can even, yeah, walk for kilometers to, to find their calf when it has been sold to another farm. So they are, yeah, very social beings. And, and even if there is a cow uh, who is a bit sick or she cannot follow the herd, they, they stay with her, they comfort her. I have seen this kind of um, behavior uh, at farm sanctuary um, and it's, it's eye-opening. Like this bull was raised, it was um, saved. Um, so normally you wouldn't find them because it's it's a milking um, breed, so they they're used for milking. And so the bulls are yeah killed um, for their meat, and they are huge. They are like when they come over, you think, oh my God, he will kill me, but they are very friendly. Um, it's they're impressive, and but they're very. Yeah, they can have bonds with humans and other animals because they're so involved in, in social behaviors and in, in social bonding. So it's, it's, um, you can have very strong connections with them. Here we have um, on, the, on this side a blind cow. She was, yeah. She was in a farm and yeah, of course for a blind cow it's, it's not very interesting for a farm to keep them. So uh, I think he gave her away to farm sanctuary. And then they thought, okay, it's a bit problematic because for a blind cow it's not easy to introduce her in a normal herd. But then they found another cow who, who has been yeah, abused and she broke her back. So she couldn't be in a normal herd either because she would be yeah, they're sometimes very rough with, with each other. So they coupled them up and they were like all the time together. The blind cow was like using the other cow as a guiding dog. So they walked outside and she, they were also always touching each other um, and helping them, each other. And this is a picture of the special needs herd in farm sanctuary. So the older cows, the seniors were kept together and so they had their pasture, they could go in in the barn whenever they liked to do that, or they stayed out outside, and they loved to have visitors, so that was a nice place to go in with families and children, so the children could hug the cows and, and uh, see how they are. So I have a couple of minutes left, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how you can help these animals because I think a lot of you would love to have a farm sanctuary yourself or go to a farm sanctuary, but there are not many sanctuaries in, in Europe. But you can do so much more for them, like being a vegan is a, a great way to, to help them. But being a good example of a vegan into your own environment is even better because you can have so much more impact on other people if you can show how nice vegan food is, how healthy you are. You can help people to do the same thing. So, um, so please be an example for other people. And also focus on the animals. So sometimes we think, yeah, we shouldn't talk too much about the animals because people are not yeah, thinking about it that much and they are more interested in health and the environment. But research has, has shown that people care about animals and they love to hear stories about animals. So it's very good to combine both animal welfare reasons and health reasons, even for people who are not animal lovers at first sight. Also, if you would talk about environmental reasons, there is a chance that people will say, okay, yeah, it's not very good to eat beef, so we will eat more chicken and fish, but then even more animals are killed. So it's good to combine animals and health. Also talk about individuals. It's more interesting for people to hear a story about an individual animal than hearing something about a certain species. Um, this is a good example, like Esther the Wonder Pig, I, I guess you all heard of, about her. Um, yeah, she has so many likes on Facebook, people are following her. They are following the stories of Esther and, and the bonding she's doing with other animals, with humans, and people start thinking about a pig as a companion animal and not as an animal just raised because they are there for, for us to, to consume them. 
also emphasize positive emotions, uh, talk about animals as animals who can have the same emotions as our companion animals, as ourselves, um, explain to people that pigs love to uh, sleep together and that they, they, they have special friendships with, 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 one, with one another and they love belly rubs and, and that kind of stuff. It's, it's more interesting for people to hear human-like qualities than just general scientific uh, knowledge. It's also important you don't have to traumatize people with pictures or yeah, movies or whatever, but it's, it's important to, to talk about the conditions they're living in. You can explain people that pigs are very intelligent animals, that they, they, love, they are very curious and they, they love to be with each other. And in farms where they are raised, they are just in barren environments, they have a lot of yeah, anguish because of it and they are going really insane because of the conditions they're living in. And then finally, please don't forget the chickens and the fish, because they are killed in the largest numbers. Um, it, if we have like 60 billion of animals killed every year for food, approximately 50 billion are birds. So I think if you talk to people, try to avoid that they say, okay, we will switch into the other meats, like fish and chicken. Try to avoid that. Um, because even if people don't feel like cutting out all of their meat, it's even a good step if they cut out the chicken and fish. Um, and I'm, I'm very confident that people, once they go there, it's for most people a step-by-step -step thing and they will open up their, mar their, their minds and hearts for other animals as well. So don't forget about the chickens. And as a final thing, you see here, um, here on, on, on the right, um, the number of chickens that is not even making it to slaughter, so the chickens killed or yeah, dying during the whole process. And then on the other side, that's the animals, the estimated number of animals that are killed in fur, shelters, and in laboratories altogether. So you see in numbers that it's, it's huge. And if you want to learn more, see more pictures, um, read more stories, I can recommend these websites. Farm Sanctuary, they have very nice stories about the animals they, are, they, they have rescued. Um, we Animals is a really great website to see pictures, um, not just about farmed animals, but all kinds of animals. And then they have, we have a lot of books um, available. They are even here in the info stall of Bite Back, so you can uh, buy some books to read more about their emotions, about their behaviors. I hope it will serve you to uh, speak out for the animals because they really need you. Thank you. So we have a couple of minutes left, so I don't know if there are any questions. Um, do we need a microphone? Or you can, s yeah. Thanks for the talk. And you said that you visited farms and talked to farmers. And how did you visit them? Did they invite you? Or were you allowed to go there? How, how was it? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, um, I prefer to do the legal stuff because um, I'm working for an organization and we, we don't want to, do, to go into illegal businesses. So most of the time, I just uh, ask a farmer if I can visit. And um, some of them will, yeah, will, will not agree, of course. But if you are open about it, if you say, yeah, I want to learn more about how f animals are raised, they, they just let you come in. Taking pictures is more difficult. When I was taking pictures about the, the um, collecting of the birds when they go to slaughter, we had some trouble at a certain moment, but then if you stop, they just calm down. And then another thing, I don't know if, how it is in other countries, but in Belgium, once a year we have an open doors in farms. So um, it's a great way to see and to talk to the farmer um, it's actually next Sunday in Belgium, so you can uh, 
if you want to, to know what kind of farms uh, are opening doors, you can uh, talk to me, I can give you a list. And so they let you in pig farms, chicken farms, all kinds of farms. Do you tell the farmers that you are from EBA or not? Excuse me? Um, yeah, I'm. Well, I don't say that I'm from an animal rights organization. I say that I'm working for a vegetarian organization, and that a lot of a lot of people are interested to know more about how animals are raised. And I put it that way. And then I say, yeah, I would like to write an article about it to inform people. And I want to I want to take some pictures. And yeah. Yeah, and just want, thank you for the presentation. I just want to add uh, for the chickens. Um, usually, they uh, during uh, the weeks they um, put up the where the, the food is mm -hmm. for the chickens. So the smaller ones just die from uh, starvation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and also, I'm surprised. Well, usually these things uh, the farmers won't tell you because uh, if you are coming inside like this. But uh, if you check uh, several times uh, during the 40 days or 50 days, depends, you see how uh, they grow and uh, why uh, they put, um, they bring up the, the food. But also, I, I'm surprised that the, the chickens that uh, are dead, they let them, uh, they let them inside. With yeah. the others, I'm I'm surprised because uh, usually um, the other chickens will go will start to eat mm -hmm. eat them, so uh, I'm surprised they don't take them off for for safe for health reasons. Yeah, well, you have to see it like this. This they just live for 50 days. It's not a very long time, and whenever there is so chickens and in regular farms, they have antibiotics in their food as a prevention for disease. So farmers are usually not very worried about having diseases because of chicken, chickens eating each other. Um, also, they would walk like once a day into the barn and if they find uh, that chicken, they would take it, of course, but they will not check like everywhere in every corner. And, um, and they, do they, uh, do they uh, show you the chemicals? No, and, and the thing is that the, um, the chemicals are in the food already. So um, a lot of like the commercial chicken food has medication in it. So they don't add any, yeah, maybe they, they do in, in the water or something, but actually it's in the food, the antibiotics. Because I saw, most of the time I saw them uh, uh, in the, the office. I saw most of the time I saw them at the office, not inside the pure way. Mm -hmm. It could be different from farm to farm, of course. I visited some farms, and, and of course, they will not show me everything. So, yeah. Okay, okay some, yeah. Yeah, that's yearly, yeah, yeah. This number is from uh, the website for analytics. It's a very interesting website to check numbers and they do all kinds of research and uh, for analytics. Yeah. After giving birth. Yeah. It's nine months. All the time. Yeah. They are not milked like two months before giving birth again. That's the only period, yeah. Okay, uh, last question. Yeah, that's right. I think these books are good because you learn a lot, but on the other hand, you read nice stories about animals and how they are. So it's good to not get depressed because you have to think about yourselves also. It's the animals are not served if you have a burnout or if you are so depressed by reading and looking at horrible movi movies. So yeah, it's a, a very good uh, tip, yeah. Okay, well, thank you. <laughs>